hi everyone and welcome back to another video in today's video i want to talk to you guys about some hidden things about protein that you may not know um i'm like why is nobody talking about this i've been doing um a little bit more research on just the benefits of protein particularly for women and just people in general because the more and more that i coach women the more i realize that them getting enough not getting enough protein is actually causing them more problems than just not losing weight so today i want to go over eight things you probably didn't know about protein um and you guys leave a comment in the comment section below if you feel like any of these things have been you've experienced any of these things while increasing your protein intake because i just want to encourage you guys to minimum get like 100 120 grams of protein in a day if not more to sustain like a truly healthy lifestyle not just for weight loss not just for building muscle i mean we generally think that protein is just for building muscle but it's really for so much more so Number one, if your hair is and your nails um, are brittle, you need more protein. Keratin is a protein that amino acids are proteins that help you build your hair, skin, and nails and keep your skin supple and to keep your nails strong and from getting brittle and to keep your hair growing. So if you are not getting enough protein, you may start to see your hair thinning. And you see this a lot with older women and a lot of times they'll blame it on their hormones, but most of the time it's actually not their hormones, it's that they're not getting enough protein. So if you increase your protein um, by 25 grams, I guarantee you'll start to see your hair, skin and nails regain some of that youthfulness to them um, because Yes, amino acids are used to build muscle, but they're also used to strengthen your hair and to grow your hair. So that's why there's all these protein treatments for hair. There's these pro. That's why you see these like nail, um, like when you go to Walgreens or CVS, they'll have like protein something for your nails because yes, they're trying to put it on the nail, but you really need it from the inside out. So number one is that y'all, Protein strengthens your hair, skin, and nails. Do it for like three months and then measure how long your hair is and how much it grows and how much fuller it is at the roots also. I guarantee you, you'll see a big difference. Okay, number two, it promotes healthy aging. It does this for a variety of reasons. Number one, it preserves muscle. So as you guys age, and as we all age, we tend to lose muscle. Now, some of that is natural, okay, because as you know, estrogen and progesterone and testosterone imbalances, this goes for men too. So this is natural, but a lot of it is because we just stop caring about our health and we stop um, exercising, lifting weights and stop eating protein and stop being consistent with our protein. A lot of us, when we're younger, we're playing sports, our parents are feeding us. And then as we get older, we stop kind of taking care of our bodies. And this is just something that happens. So I want you to understand that when you get enough protein, it also prohibits the breakdown of muscle. When you prohibit the breakdown of muscle, you preserve the density of your bones. When you preserve the density of your bones, you're less like prone to breakage. Okay, so people who are um, preserved in their aging can also move better. So now you're moving better. So your blood is circulating through your body the way that it's supposed to, which means that your cells are regenerating properly. You're still getting that youthful look, even though you may be 70, 80, 90 years old. So it promotes healthy aging. It, it helps you, it prevents you from really breaking down and becoming that old decrepit. Like you guys have all seen that person walking around, they can't move. That's because they have stopped taking care of their body and namely, they've stopped um, getting in enough protein and continuing to preserve their muscle. Okay, number three, oh, supports sleep and melatonin. If you guys didn't know, if you don't get enough protein in, the production of melatonin slows down or even decreases. So a lot of people take melatonin and but they're not getting enough protein. And then they're like, well, why am I not, why do I have to take like six, seven, you know, some people are on like 10 milligrams of melatonin, which by the way, is too much. You should not be on that much melatonin. Like, 
the other th the one thing about melatonin I want you guys to know is that if you take melatonin for too long, your body will actually stop producing it. Okay, it will stop producing melatonin on its own. And that is not something that you want to happen because then you're kind of, then you're going backwards and you're having to train your body to actually use melatonin properly. So you do not want to do that. Um, so when you um, get enough protein, what happens in the, in the middle of the night is that sometimes your blood sugar will drop and you'll wake up and you'll be disrupted. You think you may have to go to the bathroom or it's just how your body is, but no, that's a drop in your blood sugar. And one way that we stabilize blood sugar is by getting enough protein. This is why like a, an experiment I want you guys to try is to have like some peanut butter or uh, make a protein heavy dinner, like a higher protein dinner and see how well you sleep versus a dinner that has no protein in, or very little protein. My clients sometimes I'll suggest that they have almond butter or something like this before um, bed and they notice that they sleep better. I actually get almond butter dreams, which is really cool. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, you guys. Like I'll, um, where is my contour stick? I'll note, I noticed that, oh, there it is. I noticed that I get, um, I have like crazy dreams when I do uh, melatonin, or not melatonin, when I drink, when I eat almond butter. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny <laughs> you guys should try it and see um yeah so number three supports sleep number four balances your blood sugar so one thing that happens in the middle of the day or anytime is you guys might notice that you start to like crash that's because your blood sugar is low People who have consistent weight issues, their blood sugar is like this all day. Now, you should not demonize blood sugar spikes. There's this whole movement of like demonizing blood sugar spikes. Like your blood sugar should never move. That's actually proven to be false. Athletes need their blood sugar to spike. Adults who are training really hard need their blood sugar to spike. It actually helps with recovery. What you don't want is for your blood sugar to be going up and down and you're not exercising. You're not strength training. So people with diabetes, I have worked with clients with diabetes and they are always shocked when their blood sugar, their A1C goes down, their blood sugar goes down, their fasting glucose goes down because I force them as part of their meal plan that they have to have protein with every, every single time they eat, they have to include protein in it. And this balances their blood sugar. So they're not getting these crazy highs and crazy lows and over time their blood sugar is balanced and that Balancing your blood sugar prevents diabetes. I don't know, I would wish I could just shout this on top of the rooftops of the entire world, on top of the mountaintop. If you can balance your blood sugar, you can prevent type two diabetes and you can reduce your issues with type two diabetes. So you have to know this about protein. It is not just for building muscle. Number four, uh, no, number five. Protein is the building block for your hormones. Okay, so a lot of women are, and, and men too, if they're not careful, they will have a carb heavy diet, and but your body actually needs protein to produce the proper amounts of hormones. Okay, this includes your thyroid, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, which is, a, it plays an essential role in your metabolism, okay, and testosterone. You need testosterone to build muscle, men and women, and you have to eat protein to do so. So it's really important that you increase that protein if you're finding that you're a little bit wonky, you're a little bit off. Women who are in menopause or transitioning, when I work with them and they get enough protein in, their bodies suck up. They actually look really like tight because somewhere along the way their hormones are a little jacked up and the testosterone that they're building now from the uh, protein is causing their body to preserve more muscle. So in six months or so, they start to look like a different person. It's really, really important that you have protein for this reason. Okay, number seven. Woo, you guys, we have talked about cortisol so much on this channel. If you didn't know, cortisol is the stress hormone. If the stress hormone is going, 
and, and, and on, your fat burning hormone is off. So a lot of you, this is why you guys, okay, this is why you will see people exercising and they are working out so hard and this, that, and the third. And you're like, wow, they're in the gym every day, but they ain't losing no weight. They're not losing any weight. It's because their cortisol is usually, it's because their cortisol is too high or they're eating too much. But yep, I said it. They're either, their cortisol is too high or they're eating too much. And what this looks like is if someone has like a really big belly you guys like you can see like maybe the rest of their body is kind of toned but their belly they have a high belly fat that's usually an indicator that they have high cortisol how do you um get high cortisol being stressed not sleeping eating the wrong foods and not getting enough protein your protein actually <laughs> modulates meaning it helps your body to regulate your cortisol. If your cortisol is down, your ability to burn fat is up, okay? That's really, really important. This is why sleep is such an important thing because if you're not getting sleep, your cortisol is likely very, very high, okay? Um, if you're not getting recovery, your cortisol is likely high. If you're eating a ton of carbohydrates, your cortisol is likely high. Think about cortisol as your fight or flight hormone. So. If you think about it, back in the day, if we were getting chased by tigers, the last thing that your body cares about is burning fat. In fact, what it's thinking about is all of its energy is going to fighting the tiger. So if you're constantly in fight or flight, all your body's thinking about is fighting the tiger. It cannot think about burning fat when really that's what you need to be thinking about. And a lot of us are in a constant state of fight or flight. Our job is stressing us out. Our families are stressing us out. Bills are stressing, them, are stressing us out. Inflation's really high. And we're just overwhelmed. And we have not also been taught the proper way to regulate cortisol. And I think I'll do a separate video on how to regulate your cortisol um, because it's really helpful, including eat enough protein. Um, Cause I think a lot of women and men will see that when they regulate their cortisol, their whole face shape changes, their whole body changes when they can regulate their cortisol. So that is a, an important reason to eat protein. It's not just to eat, my, oh shoot, I didn't wanna do this first. I wanted to put some eye makeup on, that's okay. Okay, number two, uh, number seven, it regulates your hunger hormones i actually just had a client message me today and go wow my cravings for sweets are all gone because i so i explained to her and it's always funny i don't know i kind of find it disrespectful to be honest when people laugh at me when i tell them stuff that's clearly scientific like it's, it's low-key disrespectful but i was explaining to her which is a scientific fact that if you do not get enough protein, your body will search for protein in the most high calorie, high fat foods. So they've done a study where women and men did not get their minimum threshold. So for most people, it's around 100 and 125 grams of protein. For women, men, it's a little bit higher. So what they did, the, what their bodies did is their bodies ran around and the habit was they'd go to Oreos, Skittles, ice cream, whatever they could find. It wasn't meat. It was all of the quick, quick, quick digesting food to reach that threshold. They stopped binging when they reached that threshold. This woman like kind of rolled her eyes and laughed in my face when I told her that she just met. Oh, oh I, yeah, I found that I don't have as many cravings. Yes, because I'm not making this up, you guys. It's, it's a fact. Like it is an absolute fact that if you want to control your hunger hormones, eat enough protein. Eat enough protein, it's very simple. Um, so a lot of you guys are, are struggling with weight loss because you're just simply not eating enough protein. And if you just added more protein, then you would find that you don't have as many cravings. You're not, um, you know, running around and binging at night or whatever, whatever time of day that you conduct your binge, you're finding that you're not doing that. So, okay. Last reason to eat protein, of course, is to build muscle. It's to build muscle. Um, of course, eating protein builds muscle. It helps amino acids are the building blocks of muscle. 
And so if you eat enough protein and you strength train, you're going to gain muscle. Gaining muscle means a higher metabolism. It requires your body more calories to maintain muscle than it does to maintain fat. Okay, so one of the fastest ways to boost your metabolism is to build muscle. One of the fastest, quickest ways to build, to boost your metabolism is to build muscle. Now, the other thing I want to tell you guys is something that, um, that is, that I did not write down is that you guys, when you eat protein, you actually eat less calories than when you eat a carbohydrate. And the reason is, is that your body has to work so hard to digest protein that you actually only absorb 85% of it. Which means that even if you're eating like a more, like overeating protein, it's really hard for you to gain weight eating protein because number one, you get full quickly, but number two, your body doesn't absorb all the calories. So this is one of the reasons why I really encourage people to eat whole nutrient dense foods because your body has to break those foods down. And so you actually end up netting less calories if you're eating whole nutrient dense foods. That is something that we really don't talk about a lot in the fitness community, but it's a fact. So make sure that you're getting enough protein and, and enough balance so that you can eat. Like you wanna eat 2,500 calories? Eat 2,500 calories of whole nutrient dense foods and see what happens. Do it. Eat 2,500 calories of whole nutrient dense foods and see what happens. You guys, my um, new brushes are coming in. And so uh, I don't have any, uh, I got rid of my brushes. So I'm doing this the old school way, which is um, how people used to do it back in the day. They used to do it with their fingers, but um, I don't wanna use my fingers. So I have to blend this all in when I'm done um, so that I look like a normal human being. But just so you guys are not like, why are you using that? Because my brushes are coming in and I don't have them yet. So anyway, you guys, I hope this video was helpful. I'm going to blend this in now with my finger. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you. And I want you to know that if you want to change one thing this week about your health, go ahead and um, add some more protein to your diet. And sources of protein are not nuts and peanut butter. Sources of protein are meats. Um, legumes are a good source, protein powder, you can get protein powder, meat, fish, eggs, poultry, things like that. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to finish up my face and record some more and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.